Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hello and welcome to Talking Hope. I'm Darren Godden and I'm joined today by Jim Madrid. Jim is a grateful patient of City of Hope and he's also a leadership coach who helps individuals and organizations improve their performance and achieve their goals. Jim, thank you so much for being with us on the podcast today. Again, I'm always honored uh, when the City of Hope calls on me to, you know, kind of share my story and, and uh, you know, how I've how I'm getting through my journey and, and hopefully maybe that can inspire and helps others. I, I'm sure it will. And Jim, I, I hear that you talk a lot about mindset. So I'm yeah. wondering, can you go back to the beginning of your journey? I hear you have a story to tell about when you um, were diagnosed where mindset really, really was important. Well, so woke up one morning coughing up some red stuff. And of course my wife said immediately, we're going to the hospital. Saturday morning doctor came in and said um, uh, it's stage four pancreatic cancer. And, um, you know, it's still a little hard to talk about. Um, and my, you know, my wife and I just looked at each other, had tears in our eyes. And um, primarily because my father passed away from uh, pancreatic cancer six months after he was diagnosed. My uh, uncle, his brother had passed away from pancreatic cancer also. And, um, I have five children, and the thing that went through my mind was, you know, uh, is it hereditary and, and uh, what's, you know, for my kids. As we sat there and talked, my wife got on the phone. We called all five kids up, had them on speakerphone, and told them what was going on. I have four boys and uh, my daughter, um, and she's second to the last. And I could hear her kind of cry out, oh, no. And... Um, as I'm tight with all my kids, super tight with my only daughter, of course, you know, um, of course, she's on the screensaver of my phone. <laughs> so um, can hear him sniffling. And then my wife said uh, immediately, today's about crying. Tomorrow we go to work to support your father to beat this thing. And um, later that day, that kind of turned the switch on for me. And then later that day, my daughter came by and it was just her and I in the hospital and we're, we're laying there and she said, dad, you need to remember one thing. I go, what's that, honey? She goes, you're Jim Madrid. You know, for the last 30 years, I, I wrote a book. Um, I'm on my second and third book right now, just about ready to finish uh, those books. And, uh, you know, the name of my book is get over it and get on with it. So hmm. I guess I got to live my words. And, um, you know, my, you know, my wife turned the, the switch on and my kids and my daughter, they just turned the light on brighter for me and I had a choice to make, Darren, and that's where mindset came in. And that choice was to take it as a death sentence or an opportunity to triumph. And I took the opportunity to triumph. I also took a later, you know, it's probably midnight when they're every six hours they're coming in and drawing blood for me. And it was probably right around, right after they drew blood on me and woke me up at midnight on Friday night, or excuse me, on Saturday night. And um, I don't know, it just hit me. I, I just thought, as many of us are, um, that our patients and, you know, and, um, you know, have cancer or whatever kind of disease, a life-threatening one, is that I have this unique opportunity to battle for my life. And, and that's how I looked at it, Darren. I looked at it as a battle for my life. And, you know, I have great faith. So, you know, God picked me to to uh to battle that as as he does with others and so it went in about mindset so how am i gonna how am i gonna handle it? what's you know what's my mindset towards this is it a defeatist uh, mindset or or is it an opportunity to triumph and you know and that's the way i took a look at it so, you know that's how it and when i got home you know and and that's kind of the thing i i, I want to share with everybody is is that it's the environment too you know, I've talked to a lot of can cancer patients. I've had, hey, I've got a friend. They all know what I do. They all know what I'm going through. They know how I've approached this. Hey, I have a friend. She or he's got whatever. Would you talk to them? And yes. And I, I tell people, look, I'm, I'm, I'm no saint. I'm no, nothing special. Um, it's just the way I'm going to approach this. And it, this is how I approach it. it may not be work for you, but if anything that how I'm approaching this and 
and the and the system that I'm using is very similar. That I also work with you know professional athletes, NBA, NFL, uh, you know, and co collegiate teams, and um, you know, I, it's the same way I look at that. Um, and that is, we don't go in and go sit to win the championship. You know, it, it, that's a given. And so what are the things we're going to crush during the season and measure to get us to the championship and then reset those goals and to win the championship? And uh, did that process this last season with uh, local high school and we went with the boys soccer team and, and we ended up being number one in the country with that process. And, you know, and that encouraged me even more because I had to put that process in place for me. And that process was spiritually, holistically, nutritionally, um, you know, and um, uh, you know, faith uh, and support, love. And four weeks, almost five weeks later, um, after we put that process into place, um, they came back to me and said, we don't know what's going on here, but um, it's not pancreatic cancer. I went, what? Hmm. They go, well, there's a mass in your pancreas, um, but it's lung cancer. And mm. uh, liver, uh, lung, pancreas, and sacrum. And, um, you know, Dr. Lim up at uh, Duarte, I love that guy. I mean, everybody should get him if you've got anything like that. Uh, so he calls us up, and Darcy and I are, my wife and I are on the phone, on the speakerphone. He says, good news. Uh, it's not pancreatic cancer. No chemo. Um, it's uh, lung cancer. So yay me, you know. <laughs> so, so, so my wife says, "Well, what do we do?" And she and he and he says, "Darcy, feed him and get him on a golf course." So we're about ready to tee off here in just a little while on the golf course. <laughs> so I'm just following wow. doctor's orders, Darren. And you know, that process. Um, I've given that process to a few other people, and I'll be doggone if um, it's not working for them. And and what I do is. I take that, you know, uh, spiritually, and we break it down to one to two word descriptions of all the things spiritually, you know, that I and my family and my friends around me, and then, um, and, and you'd be amazed as to what goes on in that world. Um, holistically, all those things, I mean, I've got, I carry with me, I teach my athletes, you know, to play with three goals in their pocket when they play um, for the game. And, um, you know, these are mine. And you can tell about time I get a new one, um, but on a three by five card. And, you know, uh, I got to tell you, spiritually, you know, I won't go into great detail, but God doesn't care where or when you, you pray. So it was 3.30 in the morning and, you know, I'm doing my business. And I got in there and I'm praying bold prayers. You know, Lord, just give me a strong and beautiful pink, fully functional lung fully functional pancreas and fully functional liver crawl back into bed. My wife goes, Oh my goodness, Jim. I go, what? She woke up. She goes, I just had the craziest dream. And I said, what's that? And she said, we somehow, I don't know how, but we were looking at your lung and your pancreas and your liver and they were pink and they were beautiful and they were working magnificently. I went, okay. I was too tired to tell her what happened in the other room. I told All her right. that in the morning and we just hugged each other and things like that. Um, just happen to appear all the time. I gotta tell you another one. I have a football player uh, at uh, Washington State University and um, start working with him last year. Um, so this all happened in April of 22. And then in uh, November, or excuse me, in September of 22, uh, I got this uh, football player and I uh, start working with him. And when they played USC, uh, they got us, tickets he got his tickets and i got to meet his father and i was told that he had lost his mother that january of 22 to breast cancer and um i met uh his father and his younger brother and the dad asked me a little bit i told him i was sorry for his loss and um the following week um i got this box in the mail and um Darcy and I, we opened it up, and it, it looked like a statue of uh, St. Francis, you know, with the brown robe. And right. it, had a, it had a couple of chips out of it. So the little white piece, of, white was showing, you know, underneath the brown, you know. And Darcy and I go, well, and we start looking for maybe there's some pieces. And there was a letter in the inside, and it was from 
uh, the player's father. And he said, um, you know, thank you for your work with my son and how we've helped him. And uh, you may notice that uh, this is a statue of St. Peregrine. I'm Catholic. I never knew this. St. Peregrine was a patron saint, is a patron saint of cancer. Hmm. And he said, um, this was uh, by Heather, his wife. This was by Heather's side all through her journey. And we know she would like you to have it. And uh, mm-hmm. that sits in my office right behind my desk. And, um, you know, it, it was pretty special. I mean, and, and just things like that continue to happen. Mm-hmm. He went on to have a phenomenal year. Um, and we just, um, he dedicated everything that he, all his accomplishments to his mother that year. Um, holistically, um, you know, it's just positive self-talk. Um, it's, it's, it's not an easy, it's easy to say, Darren, but hard to really put in the practice because, you know, it, as I'm sure every one of us are that are stricken with this terrible disease, um, it's hard to control those thoughts, you know, and uh, I do, you do that, Jim. Well, you know, first off, I have that. Um, I get up every morning and thank God I'm standing up and I can get out of bed and I'm breathing air. You know, my father-in-law used to, I go, hey, how you doing? You know, you go, hey, I'm standing up and taking air. Thank you, God. You know, I went, okay, good. That works for me every morning, right? But when it, when it does sneak in, and, and I did, I, I had a, the other morning, you know, um, I'm in radiation right now. I've got 10 days of radiation and I'm just thinking about that, you know, I asked, when do I get to get off this medication? And, you know, they said, you're going to be on that till we come up with a cure for cancer. And, and my attitude's always been then, fine, I'll, I'll cure it, you know. Um, but, you know, it kind of hit me, you know, and comment came, you know, and I see it, uh, this reoccurring thing, you know, and that, that scares me, you know, if it goes away and, and then it comes back, you know, and you've heard all the stories and, and I think my strong faith and my mindset that there is so much, um, a, another good mentor of mine is father Robert Spitzer. And I would recommend everybody get his book, uh, Finding True Happiness. And Father Bob is the most learned man I know. He is here in Orange County. He is the, uh, he's got his PhD in quantum physics and he's a CPA. I mean, this guy is incredible. And um, I had a call with him yesterday morning and he said, Jim, um, your question should never be whether, whether this is gonna come back, whether you're gonna die from this, it should be how. How can I prevent this coming back? How can I continue to do what I do? And he goes, with your mental state, Jim, the new uh, medicine that's coming out and things that, you know, just the, all the new, um, you know, things that are coming out, you know, to help us and uh, to cure cancer. You know, I, my father passed away in 2008 from it. And that weekend I was in the hospital, I, I just thought there's been a lot of advances, advancement in cancer treatment and curing since 2008 a lot and you know so i i you know i've had you know dr mozzarelli at, at duarte is my oncologist uh, again from dr Lim to dr mozzarelli she she's incredible i mean um everybody said when other people that have gone through this journey with either a family member or themselves they go jim you you know you need to meet a bunch of them because you'll find the right doctor that you're comfortable with and and I'm half Italian, half Spanish. Her name is Dr. Massarelli. Are you kidding me? <laughs> She's from Naples, Italy. And I think we talk more about pasta and wine than we do about my condition. But she is so comforting. And um, I mean, I got her cell phone. She gave me her cell phone. I mean, and I said this at the, the beam signing ceremony. I keep saying, who does that? City of Hope does that. Well, Jim, we, we so appreciate your advocacy for us. But um I I want to I want to bring you back to it to to maybe can you boil it down to three things for those who are listening? You have such a great energy about you and it's such a great mindset. And I I just wonder for those who are listening that maybe don't have the same support system around them that you do. What would be three things you would tell someone to really put their mindset in the right direction to fight the way that you are and you and your family are? You know, my father. Uh, th- great question, Darren. Thanks. Um, my father, 
he was the ultimate optimist. And I think that's obviously where I get it. And I am an optimist. Um, but I call myself a realistic optimist. And my father, I know he didn't coin it, but he used to always tell us this, uh, all of us growing up, you know, expect the best, but be prepared for the worst, not the other way around. You know, I don't think it's going to happen, but hopefully it will. You know, that's what I call a, a realistic pessimist. Yeah, I don't see a chance that I can beat this thing, but hey, maybe I will. And with that attitude, mine's the other way is I'm going to know I'm going to beat this thing. And, and, and it's authentic. It's not lip service. Hmm. You have to believe it. Um, you have to believe it. Um, you know, we all were born with a set of habits, attitudes, beliefs, or developed with a, 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 these habits, attitudes, beliefs, and expectations. And um, whether you were growing up in an optimistic environment or not, there is a way. Um, positive self-talk. Um, when it started to seep in, that's Saturday night too. Uh, I was in that hospital. Sunday night, I was in the hospital by myself, of course. And I started to go down, what if I die? You know, what's going to happen to my wife? What's going to happen to my kids? And thank God I was in a room by myself, Darren, because I, I yelled out in the room, stop it. That's, that's BS. And I didn't use the initials, Darren. <laughs> I said, that's BS. Uh, that's not going to happen to me. So just stop it. And I had to do that. And when it starts to creep in like that, I have to go that, and then I go right to prayer, and then I go right to my body can heal itself. Um, I have a clean, uh, healthy, pink, fully functional. And when I'm in there getting that radiation treatment, like this morning, you know, it goes down my left side, uh, you know, from starts right here, my lung area goes right down the side. I don't feel a thing, and it comes back up. And while I was doing that, I'm thinking I'm in a, you know, in a, a Iron Man movie, you know that uh, it's going right through me and it's just crushing the dickens out of that, you know, tumor mm -hmm. in there and it's doing it. And, you know, and, and uh, Dr. Lee, my radiologist, um, he said, um, he said, well, you know, from future CT scans, whatever, he said, it's going to look like, you know, some scar tissue where the, uh, where the inflammation was for the tumor. And I thought, no, that's not what's going to, it's not from that. It's from the, my laser that's just going in there and killing it. And that's why it's got to have a little scar tissue. And I'm okay with that, right? <laughs> so I just think visualization, I, I take that to Griso pill. And when I take it, I sit for 10 minutes and I got, I, I, it's like it's released a, millions of Pac-Man uh, in there, just chomping away anything, no matter where it's at in my body. If there's a cancer cell in there, it's taking it. And then I sit and breathe. And exhale, and I just sit and inhale and through my nose, and I'm taking in this beautiful celestial great air, um, and it's destroying it. And then it's I'm I'm exhaling through my mouth and mindfulness. Um, look into yoga nidra n i d r a. It's a total body scan. It's about a 25 minute body scan. I would highly recommend that to people. I think uh, mindfulness, I do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, every day. And I think, and I use that yoga nidra. Um, and again, my faith, you know, uh, I, I think that those are things that you can, if you could look into those things, I, rec I recommend it because it's worked for me. And uh, be that realistic optimist. Expect yeah, thank you. good things. Thank you for sharing that, Jim. I think that's really, really helpful. Um, all, all of those things. And I think you certainly, you seem to have mastered many of those things. And um, the, even the way you share about it is just so encouraging. And I'm sure those who are listening Excellent. today are encouraged by that. Um, hey, and it's tough. And it's tough. It's, it's easier said than done, Darren. So uh, I guess uh, the other thing is perseverance. Hmm. Yeah, it's just developed. Right? It. It's, it's yeah. developed like a muscle. You've got to keep keep at right. it, right? Yep. Right. So what are your plans moving forward? What's next for Jim Madrid? Uh, finishing those books. I got a whole new story to tell. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I started um, why I started it, but I know why and the purpose behind it. Um, I, I started a company a few years back and uh, for youth sports. And uh, through the window sports, we can give these kids this, uh, you know, this education, not motivation, uh, but education in the area of positive psychology and cognitive psychology. And, um, uh, and if we could do that through the window of sports because of my, my relationships and my results that I've got with 
professional sports. Uh, I'll be doing a one day with all the all the head coaches uh, at Cal State Fullerton. Um, you know, so you know, uh, and and other colleges. And I pray for me because something really cool is on the works, and that is an opportunity. It's I'm waiting to hear back. Um, it's in discussion to be an adjunct professor at Texas Christian University, uh, oh, probably next good. year. Yeah, awesome. so I'm pretty excited about that. And the class is uh, the mental fitness, you know, uh, the fundamentals of mental fitness for a successful college career. I just think these kids have suffered so much um, anxiety, depression, uh, loneliness coming out of the pandemic. And, and um, you know, this our society today, I just want to make a positive impact in the culture of youth sports and these kids going away from their parents for the first time. Oh, that's awesome, Jim. So we ask every every guest this question, and I, I'm, I'm really excited to hear your answer. So what is hope to you, Jim? What is hope to me? Um, city of hope or just hope? Hope, the, I, the concept of hope. What does that really mean to you? Again, I go back to um, I expect the best and I'm prepared for the worst, you know, and hope to me gives me the inspiration gives me my mindset. It, it gives me my motivation. It gives me the self-discipline. Um, you know, I, and without hope, you know, you, you're just lost. And I think it's like Alice in Wonderland. You know, when she came to the fork in the road, and she asked the Cheshire cat which road to take. And the cat said, where are you going? She said, well, I don't know. And the cat said, well, it doesn't matter what road you take. With hope, you know what road to take. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, on behalf of all of us at City of Hope, it's an honor to be walking this journey with you. We thank you again for uh, your advocacy for us and, of course, all, all of the kind things you say. But we're, we're really honored to be walking with you and serving you and thank your you. family in this. Thank you very so, much. Um, we hope you have a great uh, time out there in the desert as well. And thanks for joining us on the podcast today. We really appreciate it. Darren, keep up the good work. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC, or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-HOPE.